Just Penu can send me for the sherry. When I return, she's dead in the chair. Her eyes wide open and her purse on the floor wide open. I can't look at her. But I help myself to a roll of money. Seventeen pounds. I take the key to the trunk upstairs. I take forty of the hundred pounds in the trunk. I'll add this to what I have in the post office and I have enough money to go to America. I wanted to be dealing with ideas and literature and poetry and the rest of it. And kids. Because they, they will tell the truth. Teenagers know how to lie and so on. But eventually, they, what they want is the truth. And I think I was beginning to understand this instinctively. Maybe this is what I was searching for myself. I have here on my lap the book that will help me through my first day of teaching. Your world and you. And I flip the pages through a short history of the United States from an economic point of view. Chapters on American government, the banking system, how to keep household accounts, how to get loans and mortgages. The ferry sails by Ellis Island and the Statue of Liberty. And I'm so worried about the economic citizenship class. I don't even think of the millions who landed here and the ones who were sent back with the bad eyes and the weak chest. I don't know how I'll be able to stand before these American teenagers and talk to them about branches of government and preach the virtues of saving when I owe money everywhere myself. And with the ferry sliding into its slip and the day that's facing me tomorrow, why shouldn't I treat myself to a few beers at the Bean Park Bar? When you went to the, the pub, particularly the pub, was it the White Lion? The White the, Horse. The White Horse. The one with all the book jackets around. Oh, uh, the, uh, that was the Lion's Head. The Lion's Head, yeah. yeah. Um, and you're sitting there with these jackets of published books around and talking to journalists and writers. Did you feel a real keen longing to be one of them? Oh, I wanted, I wanted to have a... They used to frame the book jackets. I wanted a book jacket to be on that wall, framed. Uh, and I felt insufficient again. I was a teacher, but that, that put me on the fringes and the periphery of this, of this group. He was a very quiet sort of um, observer of what was going on around us. Um, I had no clue he was a, a writer. He was obviously literate, but so were the stockbrokers in that place, the longshoremen. We all want to be writers. Frank was one of them. He was a high school teacher. I had just started as a speech writer for the governor, governor of New York, and we just get together and try to uh, talk about the things we wanted to write. And I don't think at the, when we started, any of us ever thought we'd do it. Like any good bar, uh, it was part of a strategy against loneliness. I move on. And all along Third Avenue, music pours through the doors of Irish pubs with the smells of beer and whiskey and snatches of talk and laughter. Good man yourself, Sean. Out of Jesus, we might as well be drunk as the way we are. God above, I can't wait to get back to Cavan for the decent pint that's in it. Do you think you'll ever go back, Kevin? I will, when they build the bridge. They laugh, and I'm tempted to turn in, sit up on a stool and tell the bartender... Give us an old drop the crate of their brine. Or make it two, because bird never flew on one wing, good lad yourself. And wouldn't I be among my own? Wouldn't I? My own? The Irish? Speak of your mothers. In 1959, Angela McCourt followed her four surviving children to New York. She died in Brooklyn in 1984. Two years before Angela's Ashes was published. And there we are. Are you going to introduce the poor old Irish mother? Uh, this is the poor old Irish mother. Yeah. Not an old Irish mother. I know, not an old Irish mother. No, no, right, right, right. <laughs> With such a she's, she's tragically disappointed. <laughs> <laughs> People often think of memoirs as a leading to a sort of catharsis. Do you think you had any... It brought you any of that? No, I know it was no catharsis. It just... It just opened all wounds. What I call the problem when my mother is there and my guilt and regrets over my lack of understanding of her suffering in Ireland and in New York. It is curious, isn't it, that you did... I'm just quoting you back at yourself. Not understand, given that throughout the book you're understanding the suffering of so many other people. Yeah. What block was that there? I don't know. I, I remember moments when I could have... I had lunch with my mother one day in Brooklyn 
and I wanted to say something. She's sitting across from me. And, and I wanted to say, look, look, I know you've had a hard life. I wanted to say, but I, I wasn't able to say it. We all want to say that, oh, Angela uh, died in the bosom of the family, happy and exultant that everything was reconciled. But it really wasn't. I think she might have felt that she was abandoned by me, or maybe abandoned by the others. People think of the Irish again, as I said earlier. Oh, been a warm, emotional, mercurial. Re oh no, no, the, the, we don't embrace. So I was, I was, I, I found it hard to reach across the table and put my hand on her arm, which I wanted to do. Didn't do it because that wasn't our our way of proceeding. When you went back to Ireland to return your mother's ashes, uh, Angela's ashes, to Limerick. That's a great moment. That's why it is should be called Angela's Ashes. <laughs> but then, then, then that crops up. People are always asking me, why did you call it Angela's Ashes? It's because I originally intended to bring it all the way up to my mother's death. In August of 1985, the year my father died, we brought my mother's ashes to her last resting place, the graveyard at Mungret Abbey outside Limerick City. We took turns dipping our fingers into the tin urn from the New Jersey crematorium and sprinkling Angela's ashes over the graves of the Sheehans and Guilfoyles and Griffins while watching the breeze eddying her white dust around the grayness of their old bone bits and across the dark earth itself. We said Hail Mary and it wasn't enough. We had drifted from the church but we knew that for her and for us in that ancient abbey there would have been comfort and dignity in the prayers of a priest, proper requiem for a mother of seven. We had lunch at a pub along the road to Balnacora, and you'd never know from the way we ate and drank and laughed that we'd scattered our mother, who was once a grand dancer at the Wembley Hall, and known to one and all for the way she sang a good song, oh, if she could only catch her breath. I suppose it's because I'm not built that way. Some people work for love and say it's all sunshine and gay. But if I can get sunshine without any work, I think I'll stay out in the Do you think you're going to keep writing about Limerick? No, I, I, I suppose I'm, I'm drawn to Limerick all the time, but I, I think I'm, I'm moving. It, I, I want to write a novel now, mostly about New York, and teaching, and women, and what they've done to me, how they've made me suffer.